Major cities across this country are experiencing a rise in violent crime with shootings in New York City up over 42 percent in the first half of this year compared to 2020. Here to discuss this is New York Congressman John Katko. Welcome, Congressman. Thank you for being with us. And we should mention you are a ranking member of the House Committee on Homeland Security. And I know you took some meetings uh, with law enforcement officials here in New York, also in Portland to talk about these rising crime rates. Can you tell us what you learned? Sure. And also, I, I'm doing against a background of being a federal organized crime prosecutor for 20 years. And so what we're undertaking is going to hotspots across the country where they've cut funding for police and, and they're trying to highlight why that's a bad idea. They, they cut funding by one sixth in New York City and shootings are dramatically higher. And I uh, we went out to Portland as well and they cut almost 10 percent of their workforce in Portland a few months after the George Floyd tragedy. And their homicides are up 533 percent. There's a direct correlation that we're finding between cutting funding for police and, and the, the violent rise in crime. And uh, I can tell you, uh, bad guys only understand strength. And if we project project strength of police departments, we can get this problem under control. But we we need to refund these police departments. We need to get the money to them going nationwide. Well, Congressman, you understand, obviously, the calls for, on one hand, defunding the police or uh, at the very least reorganizing how we police people, how we bring help to people, how we try to curtail crime. And you've said, quote, we can make necessary reforms without dismantling police departments and jeopardizing public safety. What kinds of reform are you talking about? Oh my gosh. Well, listen, first of all, I've prosecuted corrupt police departments, so I'm not, I'm not a shrinking violent when it comes to law enforcement. I see the big picture. And I think what we need to understand is if you want to retrain police, and a lot of police departments need retraining, you want police departments to meet federally accredited standards, which a lot of them need to, including Minneapolis, uh, you need to give them the funding to do so, so they can retrain and retrain police officers. You need racial sensitivity training. You need to um, go in there and teach them uh, how better to conduct themselves out on the street uh, and, and better with community relations as well. Congressman, we've also seen an increase in ransomware attacks in this country. And you've recently held a roundtable with cybersecurity officials in New York. And in that meeting, you said cyber attacks are one of the most serious threats the United States has faced in a long time. What does Washington need to be doing about this? Well, in, in what we got to do is um, we got to recognize, and I think we do recognize the threat that it is, and there's going to be more resources devoted to it at the Department of Homeland Security, and I welcome that, and there needs to be even more. The National Cyber Director is coming online today, Chris Inglis, and I, I spoke to him yesterday, and I welcome him as well. Um, but we also got to understand when we know who the bad actors are, and lately the bad actors in a lot of major ransomware attacks has been Russia. We can't just talk words with them. We've got to understand that we've got to respond with strength to them and tell them when you do this, this is going to be the response. Even if it's a disproportionately strong response, we have the offensive cyber capabilities and we have the diplomatic abilities to uh, put the hurt on the uh, bad actors. Russia, China, Iran, and North Korea are the main proponents. And of the last several cyber attacks, which are increasing in severity and complexity, they're all emanating from Russia. And we, we got to send a strong signal uh, that we, we mean business and that we're not going to allow this to continue. On the other hand, we've got to get the message to companies and corporations and businesses and individuals, you need to have better cyber hygiene. We can't talk about hardening our systems after a hack and hoping we're not the next one. We got to we got to have uh, we got to harden those systems on the front end. And CISA um, security cybersecurity agency at uh, Homeland Security can really provide a lot of tools for any any business to help them. And that's one of the things we highlighted during the, the roundtable. And Congressman, before I let you go, I want to talk to you about and get your take on the January 6th Select Committee. House Minority Leader McCarthy is going to be appointing Republicans to investigate the insurrection on the Capitol. Uh, if you were asked to serve, would you? And do you believe that McCarthy is actually going to name members? I don't know whether he's going to name members or not. As you know, I was a proponent of the January 6th commission that would have been completely non-political. And the problem with this commission is it's completely political. It's got all members of Congress. It's not balanced like my bill was. It's eight Democrats to five Republicans. There's not co-equal subpoena power. There's no, um, there's too much politics involved in it. And I feeling it's gonna be just like the Benghazi Select Committee was last term with Republicans, it got nowhere. And it just was a political theater. And I think that's what this is going to be. 
And I'm not interested in taking part in political theater. I'm interested in getting to the bottom of what happened. We owe it to the people in the Capitol Police Force who are supremely dysfunctional at the leadership level. We also owe it to the Capitol itself to have a better security matrix. We don't have that now. And this commission is not going to get us there. And it's unfortunate that, you know, we, we couldn't put politics aside just as once for the, the sake of uh, the Capitol and the sake of the Capitol Hill Police. So, Congressman, if asked to serve, you would say no? Uh, I, I don't think I would participate in this one now. It's, a, it's, a, it's political theater. It's not going to get to the bottom of things. Well, Congressman John Katko, we really appreciate your time today. Thank you for being on the program. We wish you the very best. Thank you very much. Anytime. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.